This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the HTC Flyer 7-inch Android tablet. This will be available at Best Buy stores May 22nd, and it will sell for $4.99. This is a Wi-Fi-only tablet. It does not have 3G or 4G, though, of course, you can use your Wi-Fi mobile hotspot feature on your smartphone with this to get this on the net if you're not near a Wi-Fi hotspot. Take a look around the device. It's got a typical kind of HTC modern clean look to it, particularly like the curve of the bezel is a little bit higher here and here. It protects the screen if you happen to put it face down, and it gives it a very interesting look. It reminds you almost of what a contour display is trying to do, only this, in this case it's really just the bezel. On the back you can see we have that very clean uh, kind of iPad metal look with the curved sides on it. It's nice. It's a little bit appliance white maybe here with these rubber end caps. And here we've got your volume controls power button up top here, headphone jack. This is the front video camera and your 5 megapixel rear main camera is here. Now this does not have a user replaceable battery but if you slide this up, which takes a little bit of force, pushing like so, you can get to the micro SD card slot underneath. And we'll keep doing it. There we go. It's finally come up. As you can see it likes these challenging designs. And there's a micro SD card slot here. It has 16 gigs of internal storage, so you don't actually have to use a card, but of course if you want to, it's nice to be able to expand storage, to put your own movies on there, pictures, whatever it is you want. Now here's what makes the flyer special, though it's not included in the box, unfortunately, in the U.S. version sold by Best Buy. You have to buy it separately for, I believe, $80. This is an active digitizer pen. That means it has a battery inside. It requires power to operate, and it's a quadruple A battery, smaller than even a triple A battery, and it works for taking notes and for drawing. It does not work as a replacement for your finger. You can't just tap on the screen. We're going to show you that to, to do things with it. The touch input and the pen input are completely separate. Speaking of what you get in retail, this is what the box looks like. You can see the Best Buy co-branding on here. It's just, you know, your basic white box, 7-inch, but... The device sits in here. This is the little thing our pen came in. It's sitting on top of it. And you get a charger and a USB cable. And we'll show you the charger because it's relatively big for such a small device. And this terminates in this kind of connector here. It's a, it's a proprietary connector, though. You can actually stick a micro USB cable into the device. The port on this is an MHL connector. And that means if you want to output to HDMI, you need an MHL adapter. That is also not included in the box. But we used the one from our Samsung Infuse 4G, that does come in the box with that phone, and it worked just fine, and we were able to hook this up with the TV, and we'll show you that later. So the Flyer is a 7-inch Android tablet. This is not Honeycomb. This is Android 2.3.3 Gingerbread, but not the very latest release of Gingerbread that adds Google Talk video chat support. Hopefully we'll see that come, because that would be pretty cool. So this runs basically the, the phone version of the Android operating system, like the Samsung Galaxy Tab 7-inch, of course, when the Galaxy Tab 7-inch came out, Honeycomb didn't exist, so it certainly made sense for that one to be running Froyo. You've got 16 gigs of internal storage, as we mentioned, the micro SD card slot. The battery is sealed inside, and this is a 1.5 gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon CPU. It's a single core, but it's quite fast at 1.5 gigahertz, and in fact, it did very well on Quadrant. We got a 2047 for one of our better scores on Quadrant, which is getting close to some of the dual-core Tegra phone results. On Linpack, it did a stunning 47. Of course, Linpack does favor Qualcomm GPUs, and that's what this has inside, but still very impressive. So we're not complaining about the lack of a dual-core, especially for something that is 7-inch and it has less work to do, less of a display to drive, that kind of thing. It has Wi-Fi 802.11bgn, and as we mentioned, there is no cellular connection in this. Bluetooth 2.1 plus EDR works with Bluetooth stereo headsets. And it has a GPS, as well as a digital compass, and the usual accelerometer and ambient light sensor. And now for a comparison, we've got the BlackBerry Playbook 7-inch, the HTC Flyer 7-inch, and the first 7-inch Android mainstream tablet, the Samsung Galaxy Tab 7-inch. So you can see the three of them together. Obviously, they're similar in size. The BlackBerry is actually thinner, but a little bit wider. And, of course, both of these are running Android 2.x, where the Playbook runs the new BlackBerry OS from QNX. Back view. HTC looks 
you know, like an HTC phone kind. It's got that curved look in the silver. It's also a bit reminiscent of an iPad design. Plasticky but clean looking back of the Galaxy Tab. And of course, BlackBerry Playbook has that soft touch, rubbery black finish. So I compare the, the flyer on the right with the Samsung Galaxy Tab 7 inch, the grandfather of 7 inch Android tablets, I guess you could say. And obviously, size wise, they're about the same. And uh, they're both quite bright when they're set to maximum brightness. We don't have the brightness cranked right now on the Galaxy Tab. And you can see the difference in design philosophy is just by the difference in the icons. We've got the HTC, we don't mess with the icons much, versus the Samsung TouchWiz, jazz up the icon kind of thing here. And Samsung tends to make fonts and things and menus quite large. Uh, it's very easy for your fingers and your eyes, but it's almost too large for a 7-inch tablet when they do that, whereas HTC manages to squeeze more in. And you can see how much more the HTC manages to fit on the screen there. So for those of you who are HTC Sense fans, Sense software, and we can understand that we love it too, you've got all your great Sense stuff here. Of course, the giant flip clock with the weather over here. Your favorite people for contacts. Obviously, you're not going to be calling them using cell phone but you can certainly email them, and you can VoIP them. And this is something we'll take a look at later, which is a movie renting and sales service that HTC has. And we've got a bookshelf over here, and it's good that HTC has done a nice job of putting some apps on here to get you started with things like, well, video watching, ebook reading, and even newspapers. So this is a little widget for the home screen, and this really is Kobo Books behind the scenes. We'll take a look at that in greater detail later. So with any Android device, just press and hold, and you can personalize it by adding your own widgets or apps, shortcuts, that kind of stuff. And you got your usual HTC friend stream over here for social networking, Facebook, Twitter. Email widget. And a bigger version of the weather widget. And they have their little, you can see it's a 3D effect as you go through here on the carousel, and if you go really fast, it becomes a very small spinning. Sort of like a blender thing. And then you can grab and hold. It, may, it looks cool. I'm not sure it's the easiest thing to control, but it's an interesting effect. So here, we're going to take a look at the HEC software symbol. One thing we're going to show you is the unlock screen. And this is interesting. You see your applications over here. If you don't actually want to unlock the device, you just want to quickly go to calendar, you just drag it to the lock ring. Pretty cool. So on the bottom here we have, of course, capacitive touch buttons for your home, your menu button, your back, and this is for the pen. And we'll show you that in a minute. This brings up all of your apps, like so. And we've got a shortcut to notes over here, the ebook reader, videos, and personalization. And if you don't want one of these, you can just grab it, take it off, and you can put something else down here on the bar instead. Now we're going to take a look at the pen, because obviously that's what sets this guy apart from other tablets. This is the pen aware spot here. If you touch that, it brings up the two pen applications. One of them takes a screenshot of wherever you are, and that is actually our home screen screenshot, and you can discard it, print it, share via, or save it. And we're going to discard this one. And notice the pen does not work for regular navigation feature is just going to take a screenshot. The other app, and this is pretty neat, is a note-taking application. So here we are in the note-taking application, which I'm not sure if this is just a customized version by HTC of Evernote or what, but yes, it does sync to Evernote, which is great because Evernote is an incredibly useful application. You can actually throw photos on there, uh, web pages, all that kind of thing, sounds. So here's a, a blank note right here, and we've actually created a couple of notes. The user interface is largely self-explanatory. You've got a little camera here if you wanted to snap a photo and put it in your note, uh, an attachment. You can attach a PDF, something like that. A record button. You can record voice and then embed that. And send it to the calendar, plus is to add a new note. Now, how do I get to my list of all notes? I was wondering, you don't do this to scroll through the notes. You hit the back button, and that takes you to the list of all notes. Strange, but hey. So here's a note I created earlier. I took a picture, I wrote, and then I highlighted over it, and I used the on-screen keyboard to assign a title to it, and I embedded a bit of audio. This is a voice note So you can hear the microphone is not the best quality. It makes you sound a little bit lispy and flatter than you normally sound, but that's okay. Now if you want to write here, 
You see, this is sort of like using something like Paint Corel Painter or one of the other painting applications like Art Rage. You can choose your brush. You can use an ink, a highlighter, a paintbrush, a pencil, and write to your heart's content. And we'll go with the pencil right now. And then with options, you can choose which color. So we'll go with red and If we want to go back and get all sweepy with color, this is oil paint style brush. Change your colors. Now, besides being just entertaining, this is actually useful if you want to draw a map, for example, if you want to do a diagram, if you're actually somebody who's talented in the graphic arts and wants to do a little drawing and painting, because it's a fairly responsive pressure sensitive pen. You see light touch, barely making a mark. Heavy touch, big fat mark. So that's incredibly useful for those people who really want to paint and draw. Likewise, this is very handy for note-taking. For those of you who like to take notes and you understand maybe using Windows, tablet, PC, it's cool to do ink notes. Very handy. Drawback, there is no ink to text conversion. So if you go to a meeting or you go to class and you write a whole bunch of notes in handwriting, it, it will not convert them over to text for you. So that's the notes application. And again, this does sync with Evernote, which is quite handy as well. Now for other custom applications, we're going to take a look at the reader. This is really Kobo Books, and it starts out with a nice cover view of all the books that are on board. And we're going to take a look at Jane Eyre. gives you a bunch of public domain books for free. It's opening the book. And you've got the cute page turn animations, and it looks like it is automatically dimming the brightness a bit for us for comfortable reading. You have settings here, and there is a brightness setting. We will turn off automatic and go back to something brighter. You can change your display language. Pick the account that you use with Kobo Books. And again, you can choose your font size. You cannot change the font itself, however. Annotations, bookmarks, search. So, certainly 7 inches is great. It's portable. It's the same size as Nook Color, basically. It's good for e-reading. No landscape support, it is just portrait orientation. And if you will hit the shopping bucket, you can see that it's ebooks by Kobo, and you can look at featured stuff, free stuff, all that kind of thing. And if you want to buy it, you tap the buy button and then you sign in with your Kobo account. So cool, works nicely as an e reader, certainly. Next we'll take a look at Watch. We do not have an account on this store, but this is a place where you can buy some movies and TV shows from HTC service. It's not a huge number of titles up here just yet, but of course this is two days before the product is even launched in this country. You can say we have a choice of 15 movies, 15 TV shows, and you can break it up by genre in movies and TV as well. So let's we'll take a look at the new movies. Dr. Doolittle 2, Dukes of Hazard, Lethal Weapon 3, Orange County, Justin Bieber, Never Say Never. And some of them are available for rental as well. Looks like most movies range from about 9 bucks to 15 bucks, and TV shows are $2. We'll use the built-in gallery application to take a look at video playback since we don't have a watch account. And we've got basically a 720p video over here. This can, this can play 480 and 720p video, 1080p video, it cannot play. Likewise, if you're outputting an HDMI, it can do 480 and 720p output, but it will not output full 1080. This is a pretty high bitrate video, it's looking very nice. The 1.5 GHz processor and GPU are definitely up to the task. And since this is running Android 2.3 Gingerbread, we have Flash 10.3 on here. We downloaded, and you can see one of our reviews is up here for the Samsung Infuse 4G. And we have set it to automatically download all Flash content. And it behaves well. I'd say it's a bit more stable and reliable, actually, than the Samsung Galaxy Tab. But Samsung did customize that browser an awful lot. And here we've got a video embedded. Battery that's quite high capacity. Battery. A little strange artifact, it looks good. Under this door, a 
Yeah, it's full screen. So that's pretty good. Usually it takes a Teg or two to play flash video that nicely. It's doing a good job. And of course it has the YouTube player for those times you just want to play the mobile version. So definitely good on the web browsing front. Also good on the email front with Exchange support, POP3, IMAP, you name it. It should work with this well. HTC does a very good job with Exchange Sync for those of you who need to use this with corporate business email accounts. Next we're going to take a look at HDMI output. Here we are with our HTC flyer plugged in via the Samsung Infuses MHL adapter to our HDTV 42 inches of 1080 TV, though we're not going to output a 1080 because this one does 480 and 720 only. As you can see here, we have our options over here for 720 and 480 are automatic. And everything that I see on the screen on the device is being married to the TV. And let's try playing back a video now. So now we're going to check out some video playback using the gallery application again. And we'll watch that same 720p trailer that we were playing earlier. And it's a bit blocky because we're not putting out 1080 to this 1080p 42-inch TV, but it's not bad looking either. So that's HDMI output, good for mirroring whatever on the flyer screen, and obviously if you want to play back video or even some YouTube video, works well. So that's the HTC flyer, again it's going to be $4.99 at Best Buy, Wi-Fi only, available May 22nd. It's a very nice 7 inch tablet. Um, the, only, the only thing that holds us back from hardly recommending this is the fact that it doesn't run Honeycomb, and Honeycomb is just so much more of a modern tablet-oriented operating system that offers a better UI and some more sophisticated features for the tablet applications and the like. Now HTC has done a great job customizing this with all their Sense software and because right now Honeycomb does not get heavy customizations from manufacturers of third-party user interface kind of stuff, we can see why HTC thought that they could do some value added by throwing their a very popular Sense on a tablet. But just keep in mind that it's probably going to be end of the road. It's hard to say if this guy is ever going to get upgraded, upgraded to ice cream, which will be the hybrid operating system that combines the best of honeycomb with the best of basically froyo or gingerbread. Nonetheless, it's a great tablet for those who want to have a pocket e-reader, pocket video playback, and with the pen, it's awesome for note-taking, and particularly digital artists with that pressure sensitivity. It'd be nice to see even more applications supporting that. So that's the HTC Flyer 7-inch Android gingerbread tablet. Be sure to visit Mobile Tech Review for the full review with detailed information on battery life and just about everything else you'd want to know about this tablet.